Isn't this gorgeous? This is the fortress at Kirithungal, currently a warmonger one. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about the process of concept art to in-game and what we see? Sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, everything everything starts with, uh, you know, initial ideas and sort of conceptual concepts of what we're trying to visually communicate. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there we do quite a bit of reference gathering right. um, uh, to try to narrow down what we're trying to visually accomplish. Um, we also do, which we'll talk a little bit later, we do on-location shoots as well. Ooh, um, and so we sort of come up, I come up with a creative brief, right. um, work with the team on that, and then, um, you know, focus on the, the key visual components that uh -huh. we're trying to communicate with that. Um, and, and then we, you know, we start doing sketches, and Ooh. they're rough sketches, you know, we do a bunch of them to try to figure out what we're, you know, what we want the mood to be, what right. we want the geology to be, the architecture, um, and then from there, once we, we sort of finalize, then we start doing sort of our more finished color concept pieces, which is um, what you're seeing here. Uh -huh. Oh, that's awesome. Let's actually take the opportunity to show people what this looks like now in-game. Yeah. There it is. There you go. That's, Hello. Uh, we have currently Andy is steering behind us. So Andy, if you could give us a nice little look at those beautiful, beautiful fortress. Oh, just, this is awesome. Oh, look at the sun on the left, too. I love that. So oh, you get a nice shot of the vista there. Nice shot of the vista, indeed. So we were talking <clears throat> a little bit earlier about the start point, how important it was, about even the whole process of where to put the start point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know... <coughs> We do spend a fair amount of time thinking about the stock point, and when we when we think about the stock point and we talk about it, what we're trying to do is we're we're trying to um, make sure that all of the key iconic visual elements right. that make up this space are sort of there for the viewer to see. So set the set the tone, set the emotion, because uh -huh. at the end of the day, really. All we as artists are doing is trying to create an emotional response right. from from the consumers, and we use all of our tools in our toolbox. We have, you know, our silhouette, our shapes, our color, our value, our light. Um, but in in the case of um, uh, Kira Thungal, I mean, obviously this was or is uh, a very iconic location within the Lord of the Rings, and so we wanted to make sure that we represented that well. Um, one of the big things that we talked about in terms of um, iconic structures and iconic concepts that were unique to this location was to uh, you know basically have this be a fortress in the clouds a fortress yeah. in the sky um, and if Andy walks around a little bit yeah. here we can go ahead and start potentially, towards it. we can potentially see a little bit of that um, so fortress in the clouds now, fortress in the clouds how high up are we right we now? we are very very high <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> One of the higher peaks in, in Middle Earth is, uh -huh. is what we'll say, uh, and um, and and you know, if we, as we sort of traverse here, you can you can see that um, we, we have this beautiful vista that, like I said, is is setting the tone for the the feel of the map. Annie, take a look out at the vista there for me. Jump up there the you tower go. first, real there quick. There you go. Just so that we can even get a better one, and also yeah. it'll minimize the the dudes attacking us. Because when we're playing this, we're actually doing this in-game, so there's going to be a, there you go. a potential of even an ambush if we're not careful, but anyway. Oh man, so I yeah, love that. This gives us a nice view of, of sort of you know what we were trying to accomplish. I mean, the other thing too, uh, in terms of the star point, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that that fortress was elevated, so we got that sense of scale. Right. Um, we got that sense of power of this this you know iconic, huge, massive structure sitting on top of the the cliff edge, oh, that's which fantastic. of course, which of course also adds to um, a good a good sense of verticality. Right. Um, as well. Oh, that's very cool. Well, how did you get the design for like this geology and this kind of thing? Like, what? Why is Kirithungal looking like this? Of course, yeah. Um, so, a couple of things. Um, you know, it is Mordor, and this was one of the locations where you know we we wanted to focus on the geology, sort of having these uh, jagged, strong, aggressive sort of rock formations that that set the tone of it being in Mordor. Uh -huh. um, you know, when we when we begin doing that reference gathering, we can take a look at some of these rocks here, if we take a little bit of yeah. a closer look. Let's try the, the um, one on our right right now, because yeah, it's lit by the sun. That's great. So you can see there's a, a, a nice level of realism that we're ac accomplishing here, and right. that is um, that is being done through a, a number of techniques, but one of the ones that we, we introduced on this game uh -huh. was the concept of photogrammetry. All oh, right, we talked about yeah, that yesterday. Yeah. So for those who, I mean, I didn't know what it was until you explained, but what is photogrammetry? It's, think of it uh, this way. It's a massive three, you're basically creating a massive 3D scan okay. of 
whatever you want to s essentially use and bring into the game. So what we do is we take these really high resolution photographs, right. either by going on location and uh, gotcha. shooting on the ground, uh -huh. or, but this is really cool, we also shoot using drones. So oh, we that's have, fun. Uh, so we have um, some folks that bring out their drones and we go on location and fly around. And essentially what we do is we get, th like I said, these high resolution photographs. Uh -huh. We scan all this information. Um, and then we bring that into the engine, um, and that helps generate the um, geometry and then also the materials. Oh, that's fantastic. And that's it's, a, it's a thing that's been around for a long time, right. but it's really, it's sort of newer to games. Uh -huh. um, it used to be, I mean, it sort of, the, it started out with, you know, being used um, by cartologists mm -hmm. and by um, the government in uh -huh. terms of trying to get, inf you know, basically intelligence on, right. on information. Um, and it's been used in film for a good amount of time, but... Um, over the last couple of years, it's it's been introduced into games, and it's it's really helped bring that that level of realism and authenticity right. um, up to a whole nother level. Oh, that's that's amazing! And for a reminder for everybody watching, we're playing this at 60 frames per second, and then because we're on Twitch and YouTube and that kind of thing, it's at 720p. So we're actually the TV we're using is 1080p, and then uh, we have 4K. And so just as a reminder, like. If this is how it looks at 720p, so you guys have a standard to know. <laughs> well, you know, and, and when people see it when they when they get the game in their in their houses and they're looking on their nice TVs, they're going to see all of the beauty. I mean, yeah, because oh, yeah. we we are we are 4K um, and HDR for the folks that have that capability in their hardware. Right. So, um, yeah, this the, the the game in terms of you know resolution um, is is pretty impressive when you see it on some of those newer HDR 4K compatible TVs. It's pretty totally. exciting. So it's a, at this moment, I mean, I. With those incredible TVs, you guys will be able to take this opportunity to. <laughs> Poor Andy is getting attacked for everybody. <laughs> but uh, see, you they can like throw you. people off. They like you, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> so there, you can you can throw people off these cliffs. They're interactable as well. Uh, but we were going to take the opportunity to admire this fortress a little bit. And uh, actually, I mean, as we're looking at it, let's go ahead and run to that crane that's up in the top right there. That's uh, another one of that features that we can interact with. But um, so, where did these big caves come from around us? And, <laughs> well, that's a, I mean that's a great question. I think I'll 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 try and answer it from a couple of angles. You uh -huh. know, as as we were talking a little bit earlier, you know, uh, when we're looking at creating a location, what we're trying to do is come up with these signature visual elements that define it uh -huh. and that make it unique from the other biomes Ooh, cool. that um, the, the, the players are going to experience. And right. as, as we know now, um, we have way more levels than we did in Shadow of Mordor. We have yes. a, a much larger array of biomes, and they're all very, very diverse. So in the case of, of this location, um, one of our, our high-level goals was let's create this you know, open, beautiful-looking vista. And that's a great shot. Can you hold on that, Andy? And then we wanted to contrast that on uh, the, that with uh, this massive, right. cave, massive cave structure. So oh, gotcha. what we're looking at right now is actually about one sixth of the level. Um, to our right, <laughs> one sixth, something like that. To wow. our right is a massive cave structure. Um, and so this goes into some of the other stuff that we were talking about the other day and the, spa the concept of spatial psychology. Right. Ooh, it's, and there's going to be some great examples of that, too, coming up, which uh, if you want to start talking, we can. But I, there's certain call-outs yep, specifically. Let's do, it. let's do it. Okay. So as actually, to jump to some comments that I've been seeing going through, uh, I think my favorite one was a couple people who I, I can't. Some people are like, oh, my God, I love rocks. And some people have been asking <laughs> to look more at the rocks. And so I'm not sure how sarcastic some of these are or how from the heart. Because I'm like, I'm watching the rocks. I'm like, I think they like it too. So, man, we love the rocks. We'll watch all rocks. Rocks, we'll are, cool. rocks, rocks, are, rocks cool. are cool. Rocks are cool. There's a lot of rocks in the game. <laughs> There's a lot of rocks in the game. So uh, with that, actually, let's go ahead and show off a little bit. Because before we get into spatial geometry, or what was it? Spatial psychology. psychology. Sure, sure. And I wanted to talk a little bit about our terror tribe, which is yeah. currently here. And I want to show some more concept art now that we have a chance. What we have now showing up on screen is one of the concepts for what the Terror Tribe would look like, and this particular one's in the snow. But let's uh, let's talk a little bit about like what, well, like why the Terror Tribe is this particular art style. Yeah, great, great question. Um, well, let's see. I mean, you know, we have a bunch of tribes. Uh, we have uh, seven that we're you know we're going to be releasing with the game. Right. And the goal, the first high level goal, was for each of them to have their own unique oh, look gotcha. and their own unique visual style, their yeah. own unique silhouette, color palette, all of these things. Um, but the Terra Tribe, in particular, their 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 name suits them well because uh -huh. they're, they're all about being terrifying and Absolutely. intimidating their enemies and celebrating their. 
their kills and basically right. putting them out in display. Uh -huh. um, and so there's a number of key visuals that are sort of spiced around the fortress and also around the entire level when, uh -huh. when the Terror Tribe is, is owning a, a location. Right. Um, but uh, w one of the jokes that we had internally is when we first started doing the concept art for this was, and I brought in some books, um, and one of the books that I brought in was The Book of Pain. <laughs> so so th th this book had um, all kinds of interesting uh, pictures and descriptions of different types of medieval torture. Right. Um, and, and most of these these torture devices were used to get information from the enemy. Is that related to like what we're seeing on this particular uh, thing behind us, like with the Graug? And the that, exactly. So you can see uh, up on the top of the spire there. Let's actually transition to showing the spire real quick. So we're going to go back in game for this. So at the top of this spire, correct? Oh, sorry. I, yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. Yeah. So at the top of this spire with the Graug who's being hung there, which I yep. think my favorite comment was, no Graugs were harmed in the making of this <laughs> fortress. <laughs> <laughs> no crowds were harmed, I swear to God, no. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that that right there is a, a, a really good example of some of the concepts that I'm talking about. And you can see, I mean, okay, first thing to notice is right. we, we all know how big a Graug is. Graugs are huge. Oh, yeah. It's They're like huge beasts. But look at how small that is, and that is at actual size relative to oh, the scale cool. of the fortress. Um, and so, uh, so right there, you can see that that Graug is is being tied up, and and the Terror Tribe is is uh, basically letting everybody know you want to come closer to this fort. Well, this could happen to you. Oh man, <laughs> that's an awesome one, and we can do it to a Graug of all things. So yep, all yep. Right. There's a couple other things too, like you can you can notice on that spot on the on the, the top fortress spire, and uh -huh. also to the left garrison, there's these blades, these sort of Ooh. big metal blades. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and start moving into the fortress, and yeah, we, we can, can see some of them up close. Yeah, we can take a little bit of a closer look there. Oh, here's a here's some oh. cool stuff. Oh yeah, I, I would love to hear a little bit more about like because this is there's a giant gap in this fortress. Like, why? What's yeah, going on? Yeah, here? yeah. Again, uh, you know, it's it's going back to that concept of spatial psychology uh -huh. and also playing with verticalities. Okay, so right here, here's an example. Um, you know, we just came from this big open area, right? right. We, and, and, and there was this big expanse and we're getting this sense of a beautiful vista. Right. But now we're coming into this fortress and we're going into these contained and sort of more contained environments. Right. And, and the, go the goal of that, and this is, it's, it's interesting because it is fairly scientific that uh -huh. and there's been these studies, for example, where they've, they've rigged up uh, human beings, uh, you know, put some sensors on their brains and studied the brain responses when they Ooh. were in contained locations. That's really cool. And then sort of came out of a contained location right. and went and looked at a vista. And I mean, this is just, such an animal response. I mean, think right. about it. we are all journeymen. We're all travelers. We're all yeah. explorers, and and so that's why when you know people are playing games or they're uh -huh. watching films, you know, you see those beautiful panning vistas of a location to set the stage. Uh -huh. It's because that gets people excited. That's so. Right now, I guess we can control everybody's brain for a moment. Andy, if you could turn around and go ahead and head us upwards, we're gonna make everybody have this moment of like psh, lighting up our EKGs and that yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah, for sure. See. And this is, you know, this also, we, we like to have uh, fun with uh, designing opportunities for a really interesting traversal and cool right. ver cool verticality. Um, and so, yeah, you, you know, you, you started out in that open vista, you came down, you're in sort of that more contained environment. I mean, now we're up top and we get a, another beautiful shot of the vista and we get a, a, you know, a great sense of scale and so <gasps> forth. That's so cool. So I guess like, scientifically we're all lighting up according <laughs> to this at the moment. Uh, it's fine. Andy's going to mind control us from Smash Z. <laughs> exactly. So it's a... Uh, oh, check out the guys on the spikes right there. Yep, yeah, there's another example of the, you know, the Terra Tribe uh, just making sure that... Uh, Whoever's coming up here knows what they're what they're heading for. Right. Um, in fact, we can see uh, the a little bit of a closer shot of the grog here uh -huh. on the the gatehouse. Um, so he's he's actually attached to um, uh, a torture wheel. These these were things that actually existed uh -huh. in medieval times. So you know, once again, us bringing that level of authenticity right. into um, all forms of torture. That <laughs> I mean, it, it's both appreciated and ugh, that's crazy. Let's um actually to another opportunity because we talked about the size of this keep, and yes, that kind of thing. Yes. Let's uh, Andy, let's go ahead and start climbing it. And there's a story that I loved that we we're talking about, which is. How did this keep get here? And that was a question in chat even. They're like, why is this here? How they uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, from, from the highest level, I think the way we, we, we think about this stuff is, you know, we go to world story. And, you know, when we start building these environments, we, we're always talking about, you know, what is the world story? What right. is the history? What was here before? You know, what's here now? Because, you know, it, it's interesting, you know, human beings are so trained to be able to, 
to know when something doesn't look real or it doesn't uh -huh. look authentic. And, right. And you know, when you when you have these layers of history, which I'm going to get into in a second, it just Ooh. it it. it increases that that sort of world story and that sense of history so this particular <laughs> that's a great shot I know look at that crowd he's so happy oh, he uh, is. this guy. particular tower uh, was inspired by Numenorean architecture uh -huh. um, and as we know with the, Num the Numenorean um, race you know they they uh, they were this very powerful race that had incredible craftsmanship in terms of how they built their structures uh -huh. um, and so this is this is something that's been here um, for a long, 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 long time. So right. it's that those that layer of history. So we have this Numenorean structure that's existed that existed here for a long, long time, uh -huh. and then we have the layer on top of that, um, which if we look down, we see some of the Gondorian-inspired um, architectural buildings that make up the interior of the keep. And then, of course, on top of that, we have the inhabitants um, that we're currently seeing in the time frame that the game takes place, which is the orcs. Right. So they've they've basically taken this over and made it their own and in the in, in the particular case of what we're looking at right now this is the terror tribe and that's really right. one of the amazing unique features about you know the the game is that depending on you know every player that plays this game depending on what overlord is uh -huh. in charge here they're going to see um, you know a fortress that's going to look you know completely different and custom catered to that particular oh, overlord that's cool. and your play but even more mm -hmm. you know, the the lighting changes yeah. so you know the lighting that we're looking at right now is lighting a lighting and the lighting atmosphere and mood is associated with the terror tribe so okay. each one of these tribes affects the entire world. Right. So, I mean, so the sun is a different color right now then. So yep. go ahead and actually give us a view of like that uh, red sky again. So if we had, let's <laughs> say, um, the Marauder tribe here. Yes. <laughs> or we, we can, could, or we, we can not look at that. Oh well, yeah, we can jump off. <laughs> we can see Andy's jumping skills. Uh, I, I think actually my favorite part about that was um, Andy and I were practicing this today and he accidentally jumped off and he's like, I really hope I don't do that. Well, dude, whoops, it's okay. Well, that's a great view of the clouds. Look, you found something even better. Happy accidents. Yes, exactly. I love happy accidents. You just, can you jump up on there? I think so, there yeah. We go, there we go. Ooh. Yeah, you get a really good sense of the scale. So, yeah, as you were saying, if this is the Marauder tribe, for uh. example, uh, it would be uh, a clear blue sky uh, type day, you know, not nearly as much atmosphere. And, and you know, we do that because right. the Marauder tribe is all about pillaging and stealing everybody else's treasure. Right. And so, you know, what better way to show that off than to have a nice clear blue sky and get that nice hit of speck on all that gold and silver. <laughs> oh, um, I love that. So the Marauder tribe with the golden spil spilver, silver kind of look. And then so for Terra right now, we're having that dark red kind yep. of on everything. Yeah, the, the, some of the words that um, we talked about when we first started uh, developing the Terra tribe was uh, a world painted in blood. So the idea <laughs> was to, to go with a, a more of a, a sunset sky. And, in, right. and And if you look at some of the... Uh, buildings, you'll see that there's blood dripping down the sides of the buildings because that's cool. You know the terror, and you can see a little right. bit of it right there, even because the, oh, yeah, the right terror tribe yeah. likes to celebrate their uh, their kills, their, their torturing. <laughs> oh, that's cool. They're a happy group. They are indeed. I mean, well, they relish in the <laughs> they in the relish, pain, I guess. They but, uh, relish in it. Yes. Well, let's go ahead and jump off the tower now. Actually, on purpose this time, and uh, which honestly, it was a very beautiful swan dive. I don't yes. Brag or anything. yes. <laughs> this one might have even been better. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's uh, do a little bit more of that spatial psychology, because to the left, actually, I think is a really fun moment, because we just come from the top of the tower, and then uh, go ahead and run off to, towards the left real quick. And so suddenly we're shrinking again, but then we can even jump off this little wooden like diving board right here. Yeah. And suddenly we even yeah, drop yeah, to yeah. a lower moment. Yep. And it's like, so that changing in verticality and that change in space and size. So you were sa saying that it lights up. Oh, these guys are training. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. The world is just alive. It waiting, is. Just waiting for us to explore. When we were testing this earlier, a guy was throwing um, a hatchet at the uh, uh, target like that, and he missed it, and it bounced off, and we kind of <laughs> had it. It was just like, good job. Try again, big guy. That's awesome. Oh, man. So, oh, we had a question. Uh, currently, right now, we are demoing on Windows 10. So you guys are aware it's PC, and um, let's uh, go ahead and jump across that chasm. Or first push, first push. <laughs> oh, he died at the edge. And um, let's see. Oh, this is cool. So, uh, 
we were talking a little bit. What's the yellow spots that are on a lot of these buildings right now? Oh, yes, yes. Um, so uh, that is uh, some lichen. Some lichen that is We have lichen? Yes, we do. Wow. Uh, we have some lichen that's growing all over these, for these fortress buildings and also, um, you know, all around the geology. And, and it's a great question because, you know, we actually talk about this stuff in detail. One of the uh -huh. things that's interesting is, you know, we, 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 we are... We are a realistic palette. We are right. an authentic looking world, but we do try to get, you know, some color into our levels here and there, just just for visual interest. And one of the, the concepts that we talked about when we were talking about the lichen uh -huh. was that this, this lichen, you know, sort of this red rust color, it's almost as if it's eating away at the rocks. Oh, that's cool. You know, so it's, it's sort of staining the rocks. Yeah, we can see the lichen on uh, behind our orc friend right there, but we can see yeah. the lichen on the stones yeah, too. for sure, for sure. So uh, I actually just a, I saw a question. Someone was asking what lichen is. It's like a moss that grows yep. on. It's yep. a living creature. Yep. So it's uh, it's growing, and as it, you said, it looks like it's eating away at the stones. Oh, yep. that's cool. Uh, this guy, wh where did my friend go? Um, so that's actually let's go ahead and start heading towards those caves because we've got a lot, a couple things to show in there. We're not going to show everything in there yet. No, we will we'll But we will. We'll give you a little bit. You want to talk about the mouth? Ooh, please. Oh, I love the, the idea of the maw, yes. I don't even know if we're going to. Let's see if we can get up I here. think we can. Yeah, we can get a good view from right here. Um, so, you know, just to talk a little bit more about the geology, um, you know, we, we're always gravitating towards these, these sort of unique themes that I've mentioned. And in, in particular here, the concept that we had was um, that this cave, these rock formations, were sort of growing and flowing and creating this, this angular shape that's in the, almost the shape of a mouth, almost as if it looks like it's getting ready to swallow up oh, the fortress. Oh, that's awesome. Um, you know, again, it's Mordor, aggressive shapes, gotcha. um, aggressive silhouettes. It's my shirt currently it says Mordor, wish you were here. So uh, <laughs> it's I, the right one for the experience. Oh, that's going cool. to see the light. So it's like it's going to eat this fortress. That's right. Yep. Oh, that's yep. fantastic. Cool. All right, let's, uh, so Andy, go ahead and that one right to our, just to our right. We'll go through that one, then take a sharp left, because there's a, a tower over there we want to talk about, which before we reveal and talk about that tower, sure. let's actually talk about the why there's an interesting tower. You described it as uh, almost like points of interest that people can oh, immediately yeah. get. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, one of the, the, the challenges of, you know, making a, a game is that, you know, obviously you can't control the composition because right. it's not like a, a 2D painting where you can, you know, follow the rule of thirds and, and follow some of these right. you know, uh, illustration and photography tricks that, that, is, that are pleasing to the eye. So what, what we do in, in a 360 world game where you can explore anything is we, we try to make sure that from as many angles as possible that there are these iconic structures or iconic geological elements uh -huh. to draw the eye, to create visual interest. And, and in many cases, a lot of the, the times these, and in this case it is true, that you know this, this big iconic structure that we're going to go and, and, and check out also has a gameplay opportunity. Right. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll have something that's towering in the sky that actually has a purpose that's drawing the consumer and the player towards it um, as a point of interest. Oh, but it cool. also just, I mean, from its simplest form, it's breaking up its breaking up the, the silhouette of the world so that uh -huh. you, know, you have, like we were talking about, elevation change. Right. And just, you know, and of course it offers you these gorgeous really, really, vistas. really cool vistas oh, so you can check out the world. Right. Actually, Andy, could you look up to see if to the left a little bit. I want to see if we can get a bit of more of that m mouth look to the right too. Oh yeah, we oh wow, it just continues to tower up and over. That is cool. So actually, now that you mentioned this is a gameplay moment, in fact, yeah. you guys can see there's a little icon here. So this is what we call a high deer tower. Basically, these are a the exchange of what we have now is instead of the tower of silver, we use these, and so they're allowing you to look and find new points of interest, including things we call Sheila puzzles, which we'll let you guys find. The Ithilden, which we actually had uh, about two weeks ago on a stream. We were talking about that with the Kelebrimber Legendary Gear. And then also you can pick up Gondorian artifacts. And so using these towers, you can use they turn into fast travel points as well as ways you can discover these things. Yep. But we'll let you guys play with those at a later time. And uh, <laughs> I love people check. Is it October already? Sorry, bud. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. coming. Uh, so we can see right through there right now a bit of the inside. But before we show that, I want to take us back to some concept art. Yeah, let's check Because it out. what are the, like, what's going on inside okay. all these places? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, from a narrative standpoint, um, you know, Kira Thungle in, in our story 
Uh, this is where a lot of the staging for um, Sauron's forces is is taking place for the assault uh -huh. on Minas Sithil. So uh, um, there's an there's an incredible amount of industry um, and and you know planning for war and building of war machines and and so on. So <laughs> once we once we we get in there, we can talk about uh, some of the stuff they're doing in there that uh, right. is getting getting Sauron's forces ready to take down Minas Sithil. Actually, before we do that, though, we have another inside look because so we were showing. Um, like you could see these wooden platforms kind of thing. So yeah, let's go ahead sure. and uh, let's do a quick door. It's um so where we had these platforms in there, and so these platforms. Now you had an interesting way to describe this particular environment, and <laughs> I I want to ha have you say it again, and then we'll go into sure. it. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, one of the things that we talked about was that the goal here was to create sort of this this beehive of, of activity and visual right. interest and, and layers of architecture and verticality. Right. Um, and, and once we get in here, we'll see that this is one of the big areas of industry uh -huh. um, where the uh, the orcs are, are mining in this cave for all of its raw materials. Oh, that's awesome. Gotcha, that's very cool. So with that, actually, let's go ahead and start heading towards that so all you guys right, can see. let's do it. It's gonna be cool. Oh, yeah. And so I think my, um, I saw Uruk Hollow in there actually made a comment saying, concept art is too OP. <laughs> I particularly <laughs> liked that. <laughs> oh, man. And so a couple people asking a uh, few questions related to this. And sure. it's a, I actually have a question, but I want to, so people are saying, uh, is, are these caves goblin related at all or? <laughs> um, not particularly goblin related. Uh -huh. um, we, you know, we certainly have our ghouls that like to show up from time to time. That's true. Yeah, uh, depending on the time of day and the, uh, kind of the state of the game. Right. But no, not particularly uh, goblin related. But uh, when you know when we were developing these visuals, I think there people are looking at the the concept art and, uh -huh. and seeing some of those similar visuals. We did look a lot at Isengard to Ooh. sort of sell. That that concept of you know Sauron's forces just nonstop preparing right. for war, and you know another thing that's interesting to talk about too is you know some of Tolkien's themes. Um, you know one of the big themes is is the concept of over industrialization right. of the world and the fall of nature, and 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 really that's that's one of the the, the big concepts that we we're excited to be able to really really sell in this game um, versus Shadow of Mordor. So like this shot right here. Uh, the joke that I had with my team was like, this is this is one of my dreams coming true. Oh, you know, all of pretty. all of the layers and layers and right. suspended bridges, um, even all of the, the the little torch lights, just this sense that there's just this industry that's forming and 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 these these rocks that are being grafted and mined. I mean, um, to create all you can see they're they're, they're, they're doing carrying them right now. Yeah, yeah, carrying them right now, getting ready to uh, to to take out you know Minasithil and whoever else is in their way. <laughs> oh, that's cool. They, uh, comment that I, it's uh, when we were talking about Isengard, there's a, a YouTube video where they take Legolas and have him talk about, they're taking the Hobbits to Isengard, it's a, it's a techno, and now a couple people in chat were singing it, and it's now you put it in my head, guys, thanks. I'm trying to focus. Uh, oh man, I, I love the way that you can see the sparkles of like the dust from that one beam yeah. of sunlight. Oh yeah, yeah, there. yeah, yeah, that's a, lots of little, lots of little atmospheric tricks that we, that we use here. I mean, atmosphere's everything, you know, uh -huh. in terms of creating a mood and in this particular area, we really amped up the fog and, right. and, and the particles um, to, to give that sense that there, there's all this activity, and it's almost like the industry is, is choking the air, right. you know, and, and, and again, that's the that concept of creating a mood and creating a feeling and trying to get an emotional response from, you know, our, our, our players. Oh. Man, it's so pretty, and I love how you can see it look back out and go in that direction. There's your like, spatial psychology. Oh, you're right. It's uh, that moment of like you're compressed and yep. then you have it open. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Let's see. We have a. I'm looking for a couple questions, just as, as I'm curious. But there, were, oh, I had one a second ago that I thought was pretty fun. Which actually, I think it, we were running through this yesterday because I wanted to tell a little bit of story. So sometimes this is a bit slippery, and we've seen orcs falling off some of these rafters. But not oh, in yes. fact, just a second ago we saw um, when Andy and I was practicing, uh, an orc stepped on a mine and blew himself off. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's a, it's a very safe place. <laughs> I was Water about to is ask. a very very safe place. <laughs> I was about to mention like it just when we're looking at this, you can almost see the a bit of ingenuity, but also that kind of level of like ah slap it together. Uh, you know, absolutely. Oh, that's a great a great point. I mean, the the orcs are interesting. You know, I think that poor orcs get a bad rap. 
Really? You know, they get a bad rap. Yeah. You know, because I think that a lot of a lot of folks think of them as being sort of mindless soldiers and uh -huh. they don't they don't they're not very intelligent and they don't really have personality or anything like that. But uh -huh. they, I mean they actually do and that's I think that's one of the coolest things about um, the Shadow series is that, you know, because of the Nemesis system and because of the way that we've sort of developed these unique characters that are, right. are different for each gameplay, um, you know, we're we're really expanding what an orc can be, how an orc can talk, oh, what he cool. can say, right. but also what he can look like. You know, I mean, uh, you know, with our tribes, mm. you know, there is a, a huge expansion of visuals that, you know, I, I think th it still looks like this is an orc, he feels like he fits in this world, right. but, you know, we're, we're showing so much more personality in the orcs in terms of the, the design oh, of them. That's cool. I love to hear that. And actually, Andy, continue on to the, there's another crane that I want to have us run to because it's a, it adds a, a very fun opportunity. We could also uh -huh. we could also check out the boiling mud down at the bottom. That's actually the crane is a perfect transition there you go, to it. The boiling mud. It's uh that's happened to wh why we like the position of this particular crane. Uh, this goes back to your spatial psychology again because now you know we were in this big open area, but it, just a, a quick little step off the top of this, and oh. suddenly we're back into an enclosed, quiet. Hot, burning place, and uh, you were telling me, let's. Well, what's with the boiling mud? A little bit. Boiling mud is cool. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> it. It's cool. That's all. No, it's it's again. I mean, uh, it's an environmental hazard, which is really cool. But it, again, it also sets that tone, the set the tone of danger, right? Um, the the sense that you know uh, they're mining this location, trying to get whatever materials they can, and that it's a dangerous place, right? You know, and it's 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 not like we just randomly say, oh, let's put a a, a, a boiling mud pool here. No, we put it here because it's helping to tell that world story. Right. It's telling. It's it's a visual that that represents danger, um, and that I think represents Mordor really well. Andy, you should see if there's an, an orc that maybe is nearby that uh, mud pit. And, they're and, actually and what, just what, there are three. What might happen uh, near there? We did just get a request in chat for that very thing. Oh, so. well, that's perfect. Yeah. So uh, as you guys can see, yep. Yeah, yeah, see. <laughs> So uh, he might come back later. You never oh, know. Man, he might come back. That would be. An he'll, interesting he'll remember. One. He'll remember. He'll remember the boiling, and this one. I as uh, Andy put it earlier. One particular sauna for him alone. Personally, I love the fact that they it splashes mud and then there's the fire that yes. comes after that. Yes, it's but toxic. <laughs> and then you know when you see some of our orcs that have the burns on their faces. Where, right. do, where do you think they were? Oh, probably, that's probably over here. That's some cool environmental right. storytelling. So, and that environmental storytelling connected to you know our, our orcs and all the different uh, uh, impacts that you can have Oof. on them and that the world can have. Just this is a living world. It's just you know it's just happening all the time. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really really cool. I love the the lights too as you're walking through here. Yeah, that helps. I mean, that's one of those things that really you know helps give it that that sort of beehive look. That, uh -huh. that really the sense of com you know com visual complexity and. Um, and and just it just I think helps sets the tone. Right. <laughs> I love it. It's um, people are saying jump at the mud, or it's just like <laughs> like and donate to save these orcs. That have been <laughs> the mud. So at, at this point, actually, uh, we'll open up to a Q and A related to our art. Actually, first we'll throw this guy in. But uh, we want to. We want to <laughs> have. We must do first, that first. This first, is we very do this. important. Oh look, you can see the guy floating in it after he yeah, fell in. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. He's, he's just he's taking a bath. He's taking a mud. His yeah. skin's gonna be yes, so yes, yes. so soft. It's a, it's a mud peel. It's a mud peel. I mean, his skin will yeah. peel off with it. So yeah. it's very good. So it's, we have looked at like a very tiny sliver of this of this, of this cave. There's, there's all kinds of interesting stuff in there. <sighs> That's awesome. I mean, just this is such a small sliver of this entire level. Yeah, for sure. And then it has so many. Oh, that's very cool. I love that. I mean, and let's go ahead and transition back to just our faces and.